Hi everyone and welcome to the NEON Museum. I'm Derek, Education and Engagement Manager. And today I'm going to talk about something that visitors to the museum might not notice uh, since it's not something that jumps out at you right away. And that would be uh, signatures on some of the signs. We can call it signing the signs. And the first example I'll point out is from the Yucca Motel. That's this sign here. Uh, the Yucca Motel was located on Las Vegas Boulevard from the 1950s up until about 2010. Uh, if you're familiar enough with Las Vegas, you've probably seen or heard of the Stratosphere Tower, which is now the Strat. Uh, the Yucca Motel was located just up the road from there. And the sign itself is partially restored now, so the main section that says Yucca and then has the plant made out of neon does light up once again at night and uh, it's a wonderful example of a neon sign as kind of an art form. It's almost sculpture-like at the top with lots of bends and twists to make out that yucca plant. The other section of it here that's uh, nearby that says motel and is on its side uh, includes the interesting piece uh, right above the M. If you look at the very top, there's a little autograph there and it reads Sleaze 83. This was not the signature of the artist who created the sign originally. In fact, we don't currently know who designed the Yucca Motel sign. Instead, Sleaze was a sign painter. We think he worked for Yesco, Young Electric Sign Company. So he would have been one of the guys who maintained uh, the signs. So signs like this one, when they were originally up and originally in use, did require periodic maintenance, and that included from time to time repainting or touching up. So Sleaze saw fit to put his signature at the very top of the sign there, and that was in a spot where the public never would have seen it. Um, in fact, it probably really wasn't well known until the sign came to the museum and was displayed like this where you can actually see it. So the identity of Sleaze is a mystery. However, we do have other signs here at the museum that bear his signature and the signatures of some other people. Let's go take a look next at another one. Okay, here we are at another sign with a signature, and this is from the Boulevard Motel, or Hotel. They seem to use both names at different times. Uh, but the Boulevard Motel uh, was just down the street, really, from the Yucca Motel that we just saw the sign from. And this sign dates to the mid-1960s. Up on this section, where it says Boulevard, are actually two signatures of sign painters. There's another Sleaze signature, and there's also one that appears to say Jam, so kind of another mysterious person uh, that signed the sign. This sign, unlike uh, the Yucca, we do know uh, who designed it. It was originally done by Brian Buzz Lemming, and he was a prolific sign designer in Las Vegas, designed many famous signs over the years, including some that are now preserved by the museum. Just to name a few, there's the Hacienda Horse and Rider, Barbary Coast, Ellis Island. Uh, there's also a Frontier sign in the collection that was done by him, uh, and so on. So we've kind of seen here uh, the distinction between a sign painter and a sign designer. And I should mention too that what we see here, there's just kind of the surviving remnants of this sign. When it was originally up on the building, it featured a cartoonish policeman who was whistling and holding up a hand, gesturing for people to stop and come stay at the motel, apparently. Uh, anyway, that part uh, did not survive. So this is a case where we have uh, sign painter's signatures. We know the designer. It was not unusual for sign designers when they are creating designs to sign their original drawings or a rendering and things like that. We think it was pretty rare, though, for the designers themselves to actually sign the signs when they were manufactured and installed for a business. We do have one example of that, though, and we'll take a look at that one next. So here we are at the one sign that does have the artist's signature on it, uh, who created it. This is the pool player, also known as the mullet man because of his cool hairstyle. And he's not a, really a traditional sign that you might expect seeing here at the Neon Museum. There's no neon or lights on it at all. It's essentially a metal sculpture that served as a sign. And this sat outside Doc and Eddie's pool hall in the 1980s. It was located at Spring Mountain in Arville uh, in the Chinatown area of town. 
If you look at his leg here near where I am, you'll see the signature. Uh, it actually includes the date, 1983, J.P. Pendergrass, Billings, Montana. So J.P. Pendergrass was a Montana-based artist. We don't think that originally the pool player had any color. It was just kind of a metallic um, gray color. At some point on down the line, perhaps the business owners gave him the paint job, and that then gave him his pretty unique Hawaiian-style flannel shirt that you don't see too often uh, and that we're really fond of. So I hope you enjoyed a little peek at an aspect of the signs here at the museum that you uh, may not notice right away when you visit or that you may not even really have thought about. Uh, for more Las Vegas history, be sure to check out our website, neonmuseum.org. Thanks for joining me.